So then if your month is a high level bird's eye view of the month, what about day to day? And this is where we get into the daily log. And this is really the heart of the bullet journal. And it really looks very typical to a daily planner, but it's what will keep your thoughts organized when you're in the thick of it. Uh, and with very little effort, it will help you focus on the tasks at hand. So the bullet or the daily log while being maybe one of the most important parts of the bullet journal is also one of the simplest to set up. The most basic way to do it and the way that Ryder Carroll suggests is you simply write the date in the next available blank space or page in your notebook and that's it. And then you log using uh, the system that Ryder has created, which we'll get to in the next slide, all of the tasks, events and notes as they happen throughout the day. At the beginning of the day or the night before, you can also migrate anything from your monthly log that falls on that day. So the daily log is more than a to-do list though. It, it certainly looks and acts a lot like a to-do list to keep you on task and it does capture your responsibilities and what you hope to finish that day. But it can also be a really great place to journal or capture your experiences. So this is the place to make notes of things as they bubble up throughout the day. So on the example on the screen, you can see that it's a mix, mix of tasks um, and things like first college football game or um, upgraded Adobe subscription or need paperwork. So it's a mix of personal experiences, professional things. Uh, it can be places where you record maybe a first date or something like that and it becomes really a record of your life and your experience. So you'll notice in each of these there's been these different symbols, little dots, X's, arrows, and that is where we get into rapid logging. Rapid logging is what we call the language of bullet journals. It's a way of capturing information as bulleted lists. It's also where the bullet journal gets its name. So in this example, the same information is captured, but on the left, it's actually written out as a sort of long form to do or notes. And then that same information is actually captured on the right hand side, but with 60% less content. Uh, it's the same information, all the same vital pieces are there, but it takes up less space and it's a lot easier to reference. So we're going to take a closer look at these. So traditionally you might write, call Keith back about to figure out where we should eat this weekend, email Heather again regarding so on and so forth. This thing is due February 12th. The office will be closed on the 13th. This is workable. It tells you the information you need. It's a little bit harder to parse in a hurry, but if we use rapid logging, it can actually look like this. So the same information is captured, but in the same amount of space, we actually have more. So we see that we need to call Keith about Saturday dinner. We see that we need release forms and we have all of the tasks related to it immediately underneath it. Uh, we also have little symbols on the left that are actually noting what these different things are. Um, so whether it is a task or whether it's just a note or whether it's actually an event that happened. So here's a, a quick guide to give you uh, an overview. So in the traditional, as writer Carol created it, bullet journaling language, the bullet is tasks, things you have to do. The dash is a note, so things you don't want to forget, but they're not necessarily things you need to take an action for. And then the open circle is actually an event, so noteworthy moments in time. Things that happened uh, that you don't want to forget, but are separate from a, just a note in that it, it was actually something that you experienced. And then we can actually modify uh, these events and tasks and notes. So I mentioned uh, when we were talking about the monthly log that you can actually move things from your future log into your monthly log as you come to that point. Um, and this is how you would note it. So if a task is incomplete, it is just a standard bullet. If a task is complete, you can X out the bullet. Uh, and there's a reason for that and that we don't just cross out the task, which you can see at the bottom. If a task is irrelevant, that's when we cross it out. Uh, and part of that is to help you see at a glance that something has been completed versus no longer needs to be completed. Um, in some ways this can be great because it can make you realize how many things you don't have to do. 
Uh, and then we also have arrows. So an arrow pointing forward tells you that you've migrated something forward to a collection. So whether you're taking something from your future log to the monthly log or then from the monthly log to your daily log. So you know that it still needs to be done, but it's been put somewhere where you'll know when to do it. And then Carol likes to use the back arrow to indicate something is in a future log. So it hasn't, it hasn't been moved to the specific day when it'll happen yet, but it has been captured somewhere else. Uh, the reason as well that we use a dot instead of a checkbox is that it's fast and clean and can be easily transformed into these different symbols. But some people do still like to use a checkbox. This is where some customization can come in. Um, if you're looking for some inspiration, again, there are so many resources on bullet journaling and we will make sure to link to some as well. So here is uh, an example of events and notes and how they differ as well. So events are represented by the open circle bullet. They're date related entries that can be either scheduled, so Charlie's birthday, or logged after they occur, so signed the lease. Ryder has this to say about capturing events and notes. Our experiences can be complicated and distracting. Rather than trying to capture the way you feel in the moment, Keep your event entry short and objective. It will increase the odds of us writing them down. The important thing in this system is to have a record of your experience. Uh, so here, notes are included with a dash. They include, whoops, they include facts, ideas, thoughts, and observations. They're used to capture information or data you don't want to forget. Uh, this also works well for meeting or lecture or classroom notes. Um, and it can also add additional details to an event without taking away from the record of the event. So you could actually nest it under um, one of the events if you wanted to add some additional notes. Now, there are times when a task is particularly important or maybe you want to note something as inspiration or some, uh, for some reason pull something out of your list of tasks, events, and notes. Uh, and you can use signifiers to add context for yourself. So here's an example where someone uses a star to indicate something as priority, an exclamation mark to indicate something as an inspiration, and an E for something that they want to explore further. Again, these are entirely up to you. Um, Ryder suggests using them sparingly because if everything's a priority, nothing is. But this can be a really good way to sort of help you prioritize tasks in your day to day. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about moving things around in your bullet journal and we've talked about using the arrows to do that. Um, this is called migration and migration is the cornerstone of the bullet journal. Uh, another way that you could think of migration is active reviewing. It's the act of moving unfinished tasks over to another collection so that they will be done when it's important. Uh, a lot of people choose to do this at the end of each month. They set up a new monthly log, they review the pages of the month gone by, make sure that everything has been migrated and so nothing is lost. It's not that you need to finish everything you write down in your bullet journal. What's important is figuring out what is incomplete, um, if they're worth your time and energy, and if they are, moving them forward. If there are tasks you no longer want to do, cross them out. They're irrelevant. If there are tasks and events you want to schedule to another month, you add those to your future log. I talked about this already, but to migrate a task, you just change your little bullet into an arrow to indicate that you've moved it somewhere else. This makes it really easy to review your log and see if you've missed anything because everything should either be crossed out if it's completed, um, just cross out the bullet that is, uh, turned into an arrow if it's been migrated, or if it's an irrelevant task, the entire uh, task itself should be crossed out. I get that the migration can be a little bit overwhelming. Part of it is setting up a habit. Uh, Ryder Carroll in that video earlier, earlier talked about creating habit, uh, whether you do this at the end of your week maybe, or maybe you do it at the beginning of every month, however you manage it, it's setting up a habit and doing it consistently. <laughs> 